So my name is uh, Sarwar. Uh, I'm the commercial director of uh, Uzauto Sepla. We I work we work in polymer compounding business. So I will give a brief information regarding our company. So it was established in 2012, and there there were some construction works held, and then and then at, in 2014 the first product was produced and then until now, since 2014, we have uh, produced about uh, 35,000 metric tons of our compounds. Uh, the compounds are the granule, granules, it's the plastic granules, which are applied in different fields. So I will uh, explain later where are they applied. Uh, so the founders of our company are uh, Uzauto, uh, and Sepla Coil today, it's the Korean company. It's the same company as ours, but it's located in uh, Korea. And of course, it's bigger than, than us. Uh, the annual uh, production capacity of our company is 8,000 metric tons. So the, the current, uh, currently we are working for 70, if I'm not mistaken, 75% of production uh, efficiency uh, because we still uh, have some volumes to grow. Today, uh, and um, the, regarding the products, so the products can be applied in different fields. Uh, it can be applied in the construction field and automotive field, and of course, household appliances. But the most focused field is automotive. Uh, it, the, our company was established for the Uzauto Motors, previously for the GM Uzbekistan, uh, to cover all uh, consumption of polypropylene products, which are applied in interior and exterior parts of the uh, cars. Uh, today, Mm, I, I heard that you covered some topics with Ms. Sitora and today I'm going to share some experience and knowledge that uh, I'm using uh, while I'm here. So here is the control plan. Uh, it's the process control plan where, through which we control all the processes which starts from the um, incoming of the raw material till the output of the products and of course and, and until the shipment of the products so uh, I will go through the one process because we have several processes and it will take too much time to explain it all but uh, I'll give you an information about the one uh, process which is uh, incoming of the uh, raw material for uh, through this uh, control chart we we control the entire process. So the control plan has the number of the process, uh, the name of the process, and tool or uh, equipment which is used for, uh, for example, for operating this process. And of course, we have referred document which uh, um, which controls this process. And then we have an activities uh, through which this uh, process is accomplished. And of course, we have specifications and norms through which this uh, process can be controlled. And we have the key characteristics, but for spe this specific, uh, for example, uh, process, we don't have it, but I will explain why these key characteristics are needed. And we have the method of measurements and the volumes and frequencies, uh, how we control and measure uh, during the process and of course how I mean visually or we have some methods or not so let's take uh, an example as a incoming of the raw material so the whenever the raw material is entered to the uh, raw material stock uh, for example the production managers are filling filling out this special form which is a request form of the raw material uh, whenever for example, the um, material has has come. We we checked for the we checked for we checked the back uh, how it looks like whether it has ray places or 
uh, whether it's okay in order and or we do we have for example uh, the material which has came out of the bags or not and then we also measure the bags because it's uh, also uh, an important point uh, usually we receive 500 kg bags and 2500 uh, and 25 kg bags and then we have a range for each specific uh, weight like for 500 kg uh, we have a range of uh, plus and minus like 1.5 kg. For the smaller bag, we have the smaller uh, amount. Um, for example, uh, how do we measure them? We put them on the scale uh, and then we check each lot. And then we, uh, in the each lot, we check if it's 25 kg bags, we check every 20th bag in order to make sure whether we have received the uh, uh, raw material uh, right uh, right uh, correctly as it's as is displayed in the for example shipment documents uh, and then uh, whenever we check we also make some re uh, records for example uh, we check we check the weight of the bag with, uh, and then we record it into a specific checklist and responsible for example for these uh, uh, process the raw material stock manager and of course we have some reactive methods for example if we have out of spec for example if the weight of the material is uh, lower than we th then it's uh, indicated in the shipment document then we have to fill up a specific document which is called like defective act where it's uh, in the, where the problem and or the issue is indicated. For example, it's less than it uh, than it's indicated in the um, um, in the bag, and then the manager of the raw material stock escalates the issue to the uh, purchasing manager, and which uh, who is com who communicates the issue with the supplier. Uh, so this is how we control the pro uh, the processes. And we have also defect control uh, me methods. Uh, so it was done previously in this kind of Excel uh, sheets, but we have automated it. Uh, this is how we control the, for example, the defects. So we have uh, special values for each, uh, for example, the material. The values we have the minimum value and we have the maximum value uh, and of course we have the average value um, so here is calculated according to the formula uh, we just input the data and then it shows uh, in this kind of graphs uh, but here you as you can see uh, this is the max uh, this is the maximum point and this is the minimum point uh, but this uh, graph shows the instability because it's uh, this system was uh, just launched newly. It's on the testing testing mode. That's why I'm showing this. So as you can see here, the the graph is more stable. This is the so the minimum and maximum. But here is the average. So we are uh, meeting the. Uh, average value so it means the process is quite stable so uh, we uh, we have also the process improvement Sarvar? yes um, yeah thank you. Can, you can you go back so just to also to reiterate to the students right what you see mm -hmm. on the graph over here is uh, of course unstable process control because they've they've done the, I mean, this is the previous one that they used to do in Excel, but now it will look like on the slide. But what's on the slide is the slide doesn't have contain the real values right now because they implemented the new system to track it, right? So it's not in Excel now, but it will be in the your software system, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So slides, we don't see the slides. Can you, can you see it now? Huh? Yeah. 
So uh, the process improvement, uh, for the process improvement, we um, use, uh, we uh, daily conduct the meetings, which are called the fast response meetings. Uh, during the fast response meetings, we discuss uh, the issues which uh, occurred during the previous day, like at the first shift or the second shift. For example, uh, here is the date of, uh, occurrence of the issue, uh, the, comp uh, the company, for example, the issue which is uh, related and who uh, found the issue and where it was discussed and what kind of program, or program means uh, in which kind of uh, part or, the, or uh, automobile it's used and the name of the product um, and what is the issue. Uh, so I will try to make it simple, but uh, during the production, when we were producing the product, uh, we have different phases. And in one of the phases, uh, two times in one shift, there was an error and the lines, the production lines automatically stopped itself due to some uh, uh, foreign material was uh, occurred in the in some of the processes and that's why the line it stopped itself uh, due to this and then we uh, studied the issue uh, we studied the issue i will show how do we do it uh, how did we do it so usually we use the powder material which is uh, uh, which does not have to have these kind of uh, materials in it, but we found in the in some of the uh, play, uh, in, so, in some of the processes these materials which uh, doesn't have to be there. So how uh, what we have done is we checked for the process whether whether what the process was uh, applied correctly, whether uh, did we have any changes in the pro during the process or not. Uh, we checked the process, there was no any changes. And then uh, we checked for the tool and equipment. Uh, did we use the right equipment? Did we uh, set up the correct temperatures or some uh, measurements or not? We checked all, uh, there was no issue. And then we uh, checked for the component. Uh, did we use the right one? I mean, the, uh, did we use the right grade? Uh, so it was checked and there was no issue. And uh, regarding the quality of the product, uh, whenever income, we um, back to incoming inspection and check for the record, there was no any issues with the incoming inspection. So we didn't find any issues. And we came to the last point, which uh, whether, whether the personnel is well, well trained. As we didn't have any changes in the personnel, so the personnel is trained, so we don't have any issues with them. Uh, if we didn't find any issues in our processes, then we go to, uh, and we, we thought that there is an issue uh, from the supplier. And then we guess that uh, as, uh, whenever I asked, for example, the procurement manager, uh, did you conduct an audit of the supplier? I, I mean, have you visited the plant? Uh, did you check whether they have uh, job instruction, whether they're, work process is standardized or not. Um, when I asked it, he said, no, we didn't conduct an audit. So this, this, is, uh, this was one of the issues. The other one is they don't have any job instructions. So they do it how they learned. For example, if there is a change in the labor, so they might, they might be uh, issues. For example, that's why these uh, problem which is uh, occurred in our production may uh, came out. And the third uh, question and third issue that uh, we have found that the material was stored in some kind in some kind of uh, material which from from where it was swept into the bag and then packed. So. <clears throat> uh, as, as you can see here, here we used the fishbone analysis. We uh, answered to the questions, uh, five why questions, but 
three why questions was enough for us that uh, and then we plant an audit to the um, supplier i will show you the uh, audit so here is the checklist can you see it yes so here is the checklist for for an audit that we have conducted so we have checked the uh, 5s we have checked whether the uh, the um, the properties which are related to the product uh, we checked uh, for the uh, job instructions and and so on for example we when we checked whether uh, they uh, i mean the job place is well sorted and cleaned we found that they there was some instruments which are not related to that work but they were placed on the table so this was uh, one one non-conformative that we have found the other is for example uh, whether uh, they have the job instructions for a specific uh, job. They didn't have any job instructions, so uh, of course they will train to do that work, but um, they didn't have anything uh, on the paper or on the display that shows how the work uh, sh uh, should be done. And the other is, uh, we call it an undone system. Uh, it's usually applied and used in automotive uh, field. It's an alarm system whenever, for example, any error or uh, issue occurred during the production and the production has stopped, it's, it notifies the maintenance team, the, the, the quality control team that something happened in the production and immediately they have to react and come to that place and they didn't have anything that notifies about the issue in the production so this is uh, which uh, so this was an issue also and uh, they have no any uh, plan for the day or for the week or for a month which was displayed somewhere so that uh, for example employees can understand what what are they going to do for example during the months and um, and they didn't have uh, so usually you, even if we have two stocks whether it's raw material stock whether it is uh, uh, finished good stock they have to have another stock a small stock it's it's called a segregated area that's for non-conformative materials like defective products where uh, the defective products are held until the decision is not made whether uh, to eliminate that product, whether to use that product. Uh, so they didn't have any places to segregate some product into that area. Uh, and then what we have uh, given to them, we may, so we set them uh, corrective actions in, to implement a 5S method to create a job instructions to make an, some kind of at least some kind of system uh, for undone uh, and of course conduct uh, an LPA is like we have done LPA is a layered process audit it's uh, done uh, depending on the plan so they, they didn't have any plan and they didn't conduct any audits of their processes so which was offered by us to conduct at least once in a week, uh, their processes. Uh, and uh, creating a place for isolated, I mean the segregated zone. And then we gave them a one month in order to cover all these uh, corrective actions and eliminate all of them and provide a proof for us whether they do the presentation or whether they uh, invite us to see that all the corrective actions are implemented and the issues are eliminated. So um, that's it, I think. And if you guys are interested, I can show you the, the ERP system, which we have 
done in our company in order to uh, automate the business processes, uh, in order to eliminate some extra work for employees, and of course, to uh, increase the efficiency of the work of the employees and the work itself. Havar, thank you for the lecture. Dear students, dear ladies and gentlemen, do you have any questions to Savar so far based on what he said? Uh, if you have questions, you can type them in the chat as well. Yeah, I hope it was understandable. <laughs> yes, I mean, some students, as you went, guessed what process you were talking about. So it was cause and effect, Ishikawa or fishbone. Uh, Shahzad is stating that Andon is Pokayoka approach, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Pokayoka is a little bit different. Uh, is proofing, is... yeah. Yes. Uh, Andon is, is, is an alarm system. Uh, for example, uh, each department had, uh, has its own some kind of a button whenever the issue uh, is occurred or appeared somewhere, they push that button. I mean, I saw them in the uh, Uzauto Motors field, for example, it, depending on the field, for example, painting uh, and painting field, whether it's welding, uh, welding field, they have a special, for example, sign and they have a special color. Um, whenever some of the fields are pushed that button, it means the entire line stops because some kind of issue has occurred and the maintenance team or the quality control team has to react immediately come to the that place in order to discuss the issue whether uh, it's affordable to uh, continue the production or whether that part or the that uh, that part has to be changed uh, it's it's a notification system Okay, Savar, thank you. Uh, someone in the chat says that ERP systems look very helpful. And then mm. the, maybe you might want to have a look at it. Let's just show us. And Daniel is asking, when did you start implementing process control and fishbone analysis? Uh, as we are the suppliers of uh, automotive field, we have a requirement to obtain uh, and to obtain a certificate, it's an ISO certificate, special for automotive field. Uh, it's called IATF, it's International Automotive Task Force, if I'm not mistaken. Um, in order to be a supplier of the, uh, and to be in the chain of the uh, um, of automotive field, you have to be awarded to that certificate and you have to be compliant to all the requirements of that certificate. So uh, uh, at that time, I mean, when I, if I'm working, I'm working here, uh, I've been working for four years. So when I came here, I started implementing it uh, before because they use only ISO 9, 9001. But uh, for example, whenever we, uh, Whenever we are trying to implement, I mean, the design a new product, uh, we approve our products from GM Korea or GM North America. And then um, whenever we started an approval process for, for a design process for a new product, they required a special certificate for, um, for an automotive field. That's why we had to implement that uh, certificate on all the requirements and I think it's it was in 2016 uh, since then we are compliant to that uh, standards and then we are able to supply uh, for GM uh, I don't see the questions I think well thank you Savar uh, you need to Click on the chat. Mm. Uh, any other questions? I'll ask the question so far while they're thinking. Uh, mm -hmm. So far, do you like working in the in the factory, in the manufacturing plant? How do you find it? Uh, actually, 
if you come if you start working in the production i think you can never quit because <laughs> because it's really uh, it's very interesting because every day you learn something new every day whenever some a new client comes and brings out a new product and then you start working on it it means you gain anything something new from them and then you share the knowledge and then from client to client, from product to product, you you learn every day something new. And th this is why I'm here and this is what I really like. I think if you, yeah, it's once you came to the production, you, never, you can never quit, I think. If, of course, if I'm going to leave uh, this company, I would build my own and that will be in the production field. Sounds good. Um, do you like working in, uh, how do you find working with uh, Koreans? Uh, well, it's difficult <laughs> because they have, uh, they say that we have a similar uh, cultures, but I don't think so because um, it's very hard to work with them because they are very, um, they're very strict first. They are very uh, always on time. They they do everything according to the schedule, according to the timeline. They follow the schedules, but uh, in Uzbekistan, it's quite difficult to follow because it doesn't work so. Um, but working with them, I learned a lot too uh, because they are more experienced. Of course, they, uh, they are not open for 100%, but that also helps me to work on myself and to uh to do the self-study in order to find something what i asked from them but they didn't give me thank you sarvar we have a question um yeah. before before i go i i think students are interested about erp someone asked uh someone is asking mm -hmm. was it self-created or um or can they buy it who built the erp what software you're using uh, actually, it was created, the idea was our own. Uh, for example, from my four year experience, and uh, we actually, we, uh, the current general director, which uh, that managed the company, we came to this company almost uh, at the same time. And then during our four or five year experience, uh, we worked in different fields and, and we know how each for example the process works and then uh, out of our own experience we build a such a system of course we set up a requirement to an IT guys they um, they they have done it but the entire the idea was our own we approached to uh, SAP uh, which is well known company who is work, who who has who's been doing uh, this kind of system but it was uh, really expensive but and then we came out with the idea to hire an IT guy who can uh, build such kind of system for us and of course it requires an investment and time and continuous improvement because it's not just about uh, creating it and then it works no we, the, the creating is one, the implementation and working with the employees is the hardest part. <laughs> good, thank you very much. So your ERP seems to be good and your IT guy seems to be good. Uh, is it okay to ask how much did it cost approximately? Um, the first investment uh, was about uh, 40, um, 40 million zooms. So it's like 4,000 4, uh, USD. Um, that was uh, for just for the project. And then we continuously, anyway, we invest uh, on it because we have purchased the, our own service to store all the data in it. And then we continuously uh, investing it. And the total investment, I think, maybe is about like for the current time, maybe seven or eight thousand USD. Sounds like a good deal. Uh, okay, I have another question. Uh, looks like you're a former student of Westminster. 
No, I'm a former student of NDIST. <laughs> okay. Uh, Shahzad is asking, what quality improvement method did you use to, or do you use to resolve problems after finding the root cause of the problems? Have you ever thought about applying Six Sigma approach? Well, uh, Six Sigma, I just started uh, learning it. Uh, well, actually, I worked two years in the quality control and I was implementing all of this, but uh, since 2018, I was uh, redirected into the sales department and I left that part. And then, of course, I I didn't practice uh, my knowledge at the quality control and all, all, all about this. And then I started forgetting it, but uh, I purchased, purchased during uh, pandemic time of course, I was in trend and purchased uh, an online lessons uh, for Six Sigma project management and lean production. Uh, I just started learning it and I'm planning to implement it too. But uh, now we didn't uh, implement it yet. Uh, my my uh, difficult question, not my painful question, anyone uses <laughs> House of Quality? Nowadays, no, not yet. QFD for product design uh, in in Uzauto system. Yeah. Maybe only Uzauto motors, uh, Asaka plant, maybe, and maybe. Um, no, I think I think powertrain they don't use it. May, only in Asaka plant, I think, can be used. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Sarvar, when, when we're done with pandemic, can we take a field trip to the factory? Yes, sure. Okay. <laughs> Sounds mm -hmm. good. <laughs> uh, how, many, uh, how many employees work in your plant? Uh, 58 people, employees uh, working in our field. Uh, because uh, our main, the main production processes are automated. That's why we don't have a lot of people uh, working in, uh, in the production. The most of the employees are uh, in the production field. I think we have like maximum 20, 15 or 20 people. The other is office, the securities, the, the, the cleaning staff, something like this. Thank you very much, Savar. Can you show us a little bit, maybe excerpt from your ERP, how it worked? Can you do something in <clears throat> Yes. Uh, can it, is it visible now? Yes, yes. We can see it. So, the, the my part is for sales. Uh, this is actually where the process, uh, all the processes start. Uh, whenever we uh, input the uh, sales plan into this uh, system, the ERP system. So it's separated according to the clients, products. Uh, so this is, for example, the plan for a month. So here we can see the, the total amounts as well. So we put the plan, it calculates the amount uh, of the sum which we need to receive from the clients too. And it shows also uh, how much uh, how much product we have produced uh, since the beginning of the month, how much we shipped out, and how, how much do we have in the storage too. And how much do we need to uh, ship out also. So uh, as soon as we uh, set up a plan for a month, uh, the ERP calculates how much raw material we do, do for example, the purchasing department has to purchase. So I will show you. Um, Sarvar, ladies and gentlemen, I think my Zoom session is going to over in one minute. If it suddenly quits, please re-log in, okay? I mean, we have 15 more minutes. For some reason it closes, okay? Okay. Or let me just shut it down and I'll restart it, okay? Let's rejoin. Or rather than waiting, just like.